Hello everyone, thank you for joining this webinar. The topic of the webinar is multiple time frame analysis. Hello guys, just tell me uh, what country are you from? Um, if you remember, my name is Viktor Nyostroyev, I'm from Russia. I have already conducted a few webinars, uh, especially the webinars Um, especially the webinars about expert advisors and algorithmic trading. For example, the previous webinar I conducted was about the role of uh, diversification in algorithmic trading. Oh, okay, Christian. Hi, Christian. Christian is from Denmark. Okay, we have 14 attendees and we are going to start soon. Okay. Uh, this webinar is recorded and you can watch the record of the webinar next week on forexboard.com. And of course, all the materials I share with you at this webinar I uh, will also upload to our um, private Forex trading group on Facebook. Okay, guys, what do you think about Bitcoin? I mean, uh, currently, uh, Bitcoin uh, is over psychologically level uh, of 9,000 uh, that pretty much if we consider that um, just a few weeks ago it was um, just about 7,000 so what, what do you think what is the reason of Bitcoin to increase uh, because you may have heard that uh, this week the major focus uh, the major focus about um, uh, cryptocurrency was on the removal of around uh, 140 million dollars in bitcoin uh, from wallets of now defunct exchange empty gox and of course people were afraid that a large move of 16000 bitcoins could cause a price crash but it didn't ha happen So, what do you think? What is the reason of it? Mm, of course, of course, there is a general bullish sentiment uh, on the market. So, anyway, the cryptocurrencies are going to increase. I don't know how much, but uh, some experts think that mm, uh, in uh, in nearest 10 years, the price of Bitcoin can um, increase significantly. For example, in uh, we can update the currently, uh, I mean, the current high in 12 months. Oh, this is not my opinion. I'm not sure about it, but this is what I heard on the market. And by the way, um, Nasdaq is also uh also considers to open its own cryptocurrency exchange and i think that uh, this news can help to bitcoin to increase its value if it's really true okay so There is also Fidelis from Zimbabwe. Hi, Fidelis. Nice to see you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is your first webinar that you attend. Okay, so one more question. 
Okay, just let's go back. One more question for you, or maybe not a question. So, um, what do you think about euro? Because uh, the euro went down. I mean, the the currency euro USD went down after the announcement of European Central Bank. However, ECB left monetary policy unchanged, and uh, it means it should be positive news for for euro. As I see this situation, um, uh, EURUSD simply couldn't overcome the dollar strength. So there was also a few news uh, on dollar and they were uh, mainly positive. It was a core durable goods order announcement. So durable goods orders were two and six percent against expectations of one and six. And today there was announcement of uh, US GDP. And it also overcame expectations so uh, American GDP on in the first quarter was two and three percent against expectations of two. So a little bit lower, which means that an American economy improves better than European. Uh, hi Ali, where are you from? This is also your first webinar. Yeah, I'm really glad to see at least uh, 15 attendees here. Uh -huh. So you are from Bahrain. Okay, good. Uh, Okay, 16 attendees. Okay, looks like we we should start. So once again, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Victor Neustroyev. I am a private trader and since 2003 I've been trading financial markets, starting with Forex, then I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. And now I specialize in agricultural markets because I consider them to be more transparent. Uh, however, I also trade Forex and I have a few strategies that work on Forex. Okay, I'm turning off my camera. And please read the disclaimer. Today, our topic is multiple time frame analysis. Most trading strategies built on popular trading mechanisms like common technical indicators and chart patterns only emphasize the time frame being watched and analyzed with no regards to higher or lower time frames. This can be a huge mistake to make as much as it extends your analysis and requires studying the same price action from different perspectives, it is a much needed aspect of becoming a long-term trader. Regardless of whether you trade on the higher time frames as a swing trader or a long trader, or whether you are a scalper on the lower time frames, analyzing a multitude of time frames, is a real way for you to be on top of market sentiment. So this is um, the general idea. By applying multiple time frame analysis, at least we want to find out what the market sentiment is. OK, I think you read the disclaimer. Here is the plan of the webinar. So 
First, we discuss what uh, multiple time frame analysis is, why it works, and uh, then I will demonstrate to you a step-by-step -step guide how to perform multiple time frame analysis. I will also demonstrate you the strategy that I use sometimes and um, I just want you to know their basic idea how to apply multiple time frame analysis in your own trading strategy. So then I will um, uh, explain how to incorporate parallel and inverse pairs when you apply multiple time frame analysis. And then I will tell a few things about the future of this kind of analysis and the problems we face and uh, how to solve them if it is uh, if it's possible. Okay, let's continue. So, you know, guys, most Forex traders generally look at the only one time frame. But for those of you who want to truly understand how the Forex market works, it is imperative to make a complete analysis of a currency pair and the overall market before entering a trade and risking your money. Multiple time frame analysis of the Forex market is completely misunderstood and most traders are scared to try to learn it. So what is multiple time frame analysis? It is the inspection of very basic trend indicators and charts starting with the largest trends and time frames and working backward down through successively smaller time frames to see how the smaller time frames and trends fit the larger the larger time frames. When the smaller time frames are in agreement with the larger trends, you can enter a spot trade in the direction of the trend with a very good safety. Uh, and if no trend exists on a particular currency pair, the smaller time frames and trends will, at some point, build an uptrend or downtrend. Multiple time frame analysis is completely logical. The principles of multiple time frame analysis are also fairly simple and if used daily will help you to learn to trade the currency market and have a complete understanding of how it works. When you use multiple time frame analysis, the smaller trends are used to enter the larger trends. If a trend is available, or to observe how the larger trends are built from the smaller time frames. And if a larger trend is currently established on a particular currency pair, you would enter the trade when the smaller trends and time frames are in agreement with the larger trends. So the smaller time frames confirm the continuation of the established trend. This is the main function of multiple time frame analysis. So we open a trade if the smaller time frames confirm the continuation of the uh, larger trend. A multiple time frame analysis has been around for nearly 30 years and this method is applicable to stock and commodities, also to options and currency options and of course to forex trading. You can apply this method to any currency pair. There is a question from Andres. So we enter on the smaller time frame, not the bigger time frame. Uh, so Andres, what we do? We analyze the overall market using the large time frame 
and we open a trade using a smaller time frame only in case if the trend on smaller time frame corresponds with a larger um, with the trend on a larger time frame with the main trend Okay, guys. Um, so this is the illustration of how m multiple time frame analysis work. So we analyze um, some period on larger time frame. Then we analyze it in more details in uh, H4 time frame. Then on H1 time frame, and then we look at M15, for example, and this is how we um, look for uh, for the entry point, so where to enter the market. Uh, now let's speak about w why multiple time frame analysis works. By understanding what is happening over a longer period of time, you can make more accurate decisions when looking for trading opportunities on a smaller time frames. If there is a long trend on a higher time frame, then trading in the direction of that trend on the lower time frame is likely to produce a higher probability of winning trades. Uh, let me show it with the help of expert advisor built into MetaTrader 4. Okay, so for example, I took MACD Expert Advisor, which is um, uh, which is already built into uh, this platform, and I didn't optimize it for EURUSD. Uh, let's imagine we opened daily time frame. For example, here uh, we see that uh, we notice the end of the downtrend here and the beginning of the uptrend. We can find out the new uptrend in early April. And let us assume that this uptrend will continue until December. It doesn't matter what strategy we trade, but if the market continues to be in the uptrend, long trades would bring more profit. At the same time, most of the short trades can be losses. This is what I'm going to show now. Uh, let's run a backtest. Uh, with the period from wait a second with the period from April to December okay then I run this uh, uh, expert advisor which was not optimized and let's see what uh, what could happen.
now you see that um, the strategy loses on that period of course there are some profitable trades but mainly it loses and there is a total loss about four hundred dollars for that period oh actually more than let's see uh eight eight hundred eight hundred fifty eight dollars that was a loss mm -hmm. let's go back but now let's look what can happen if we noticed an uptrend on the daily chart and decided to open only long trades so here i click long only Okay, now, wait a second, the performance is much better. Of course, there are some losing trades, but generally, the strategy brought more money. So, I mean, total net profit is positive. It's just 100 uh, against uh, minus uh, more than 800 in the previous case when we applied um long and short trades so if we found out that there was a, an uptrend then we for example can filter our signals and trade only in one direction so we open only long trades and it could bring us money so uh you see uh, i i didn't optimize this strategy at all Mm, and I actually I don't like its performance, but by this example I demonstrate to you that the overall market direction affects your strategy performance significantly. Uh, so this is just one of the ways how to use multiple time frame analysis. Identify trend on the daily chart and open trades only in the direction of this trend. Okay, let's continue. In terms of counter trend trading, take for example a support or resistance level that has been identified on a higher time frame, say a daily chart. It is likely that there are many more traders observing those particular key levels. Those traders include large banks and financial institutions that trade billions of dollars and generally use higher time frames. Multiple time frame analysis works because you can identify the trends and possible reversals on the higher time frame, then find more accurate and try points on lower time frames. The support or resistance level that has been identified on the daily chart uh, is therefore going to be a powerful turning point for counter trend traders so once the support or resistance level has been established on the higher time frame a lower time frame uh, for example one hour chart can then be used to define the exact point to enter the higher time frame has provided a very strong support or resistance level and the lower time frame helps you to enter a trade with the tighter stops reducing the risk on each trade. 
So let me show you. Uh, for example, look at this chart on the left side of the slide. This is a resistance level on daily chart of USD Canadian dollar. Then we open lower time frames, for example, H1, and try to use these levels by opening short trades every time when the market reaches the resistance, like it was here, here, and here, and also a few examples here. So when the market uh, on lower time frame reaches the resistance level, we open a short trade, and this trade is likely to be profitable. So now let's let me explain how to perform multiple time frame analysis step by step. Most traders pick their one time frame and then almost never leave it or they just leave their time frame to go down to lower time frames to find more trading opportunities which basically means that they are excitedly hunting for signals on time frames they shouldn't be on. So for example, a trader uh, execute his trades on M15 time frames, but he opens uh, M5 and M1 time frames to get more trading opportunities. Actually, that is a mistake. Okay, there is a question um, from Andres. Uh, do you wait for a confirmation candle to enter? Uh, or do you enter as soon as it hits the resistance line? Uh, it depends on the resistance. For example, if the resistance is taken from the daily chart, I can just um, uh, create a sell stop, just yeah, yeah, just sell stop on that level. Uh, but if um, th there was a, a resistance on lower time frame, which is which can be broken, then I I'm waiting for a confirmation for another candle to confirm. And in this case, I wait for uh, for this candle to uh, to to open lower than the resistance level. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. So this is what I do, but uh, of course, um, I know that some traders uh, wait for confirmation candle, but uh, I do the same thing if um, I trade on lower time frames, but if it's daily time frame, that's okay just to, uh, at least it's okay for me to send a uh, sell stop in this case, if uh, the market reaches the resistance level. Okay, let's continue. So the professional trader knows that the only way to approach trading is with a top-down approach. When we first start with the daily time frame, then switch to H4 time frame, then to H1, and uh, then to the time frame we execute a trade, like M15 in my case. So daily time frame can tell us where are we now so is it the are we in the uptrend or downtrend is it the end of the trend or the market is in a range h4 is a strategic time frame uh, on h1 time frame we are looking for and how to execute a trade and for 
we are we are creating different scenarios and on 15 time frame we are looking for point to enter the market i will explain every every time frame in more details later okay there is one more question uh so hi Stuart. uh don't worry uh this webinar is recorded so you can um, watch the beginning of the webinar later on forexboard.com okay good so we can continue so there are two ways to apply a multiple time frame analysis and uh, one of the these ways is absolutely wrong when we apply bottom up analysis when we start with a lower time frame then we look for larger and larger and larger So this is the biggest mistake traders make. They typically st start their analysis on the lowest of their time frames and then work their way up to the higher time frames. So traders create opinions on the lower time frames and then just try to find reasons that support their opinions on the higher time frames. So try to avoid such mistakes. So starting your analysis on your execution time frame where you place your trades creates a very narrow and one dimensional view and it misses the point of the multiple time frame analysis. Traders just adopt a specific market direction or opinion on their lower time frames and are then just looking for ways to confirm their opinion. The top down approach is much more objective way of doing your analysis because you start with a broader view and then you work your way down and down so you start with daily time frame then uh, switch to h4 h1 and m15 obviously the daily time frame is less important if you are trading on a one hour time frame However, a trader who never leaves his execution time frame has a very narrow view of the market. And he cannot put things into the right context. Every trader, regardless of his main time frame, should start his trading day looking at the higher time frames to be able to put things in the right perspective. But Looking is not enough because once you arrive at your lower time frame, you will have forgotten everything what you saw on the higher time frames. Uh, that's why I suggest uh, two ways to deal with it. So first is just make notes. Uh, you can on your trading desk, you can place a physical notepad for every market you trade and write down what you saw on larger time frames. And the second uh, thing that can help, you can annotate your charts. All charting platforms offer text objects and you can use them to directly write on your charts. It is also advisable to mark the areas on your chart, uh, the areas of your interest. Uh, this way you are less likely to skip the trade or enter the market prematurely. When it comes to actually performing your multiple time frame analysis, you should know what to do and how to approach. It can help you build a time effective routine that guides you through your trading session. So once again, uh, on daily time frame, we can see the big picture. Where are we overall? And look for any important price areas ahead. On H4 time frame, we can see the second big picture. What is the long-term trend? And if there are some important levels for this week. At H1 
time frame, we ask ourselves, what is the trade scenario? Where do we want to enter? What are potential profits and good areas for your stop loss? And what has to happen before you enter the market? On M15 time frame, it's a time frame for execution. You wait for all your trade signals to align. Okay, as I said, uh, if you mainly use H1, M30 or M15 time frame to execute your trades, you don't have to spend too much time here on daily time frame. Basically, you just want to get a feeling for the overall market direction. And if there are any major price levels ahead, especially uh, look for long-term support and resistance or weekly or annual highs and lows and you should mark them on your charts. So look at this chart. For example, here we can notice an uptrend. There is also a resistance level. So major uptrend, resistance here. And as we see, the market is likely to continue an uptrend this week. And uh, my first thought was that uh, the trend can be broken if the price goes lower than this minimum, <clears throat> 1 and 17. So you see, I wrote it on my chart. Then we switch to H4 time frame. This is strategic time frame. Uh, you have to spend a bit more time on it. Here you analyze the potential market direction for the week ahead. And also you determine potential, potential trade areas. Uh, again, here you can um, draw your support and resistance lines and mark high, uh, highs and lows, even if you don't use them in your trading. It is worth having them on your charts because they are so commonly used, especially by large players. So here I add linear regression indicator to show that it is still an uptrend. So as you can see from this chart, currently we are in a weak uptrend, but mainly the market can be flat this week. So there is a resistance which we took from the larger time frame. And as we see, the market still has a room for upside movement, but before it, it is likely to slightly decrease. Then we switch to H1 time frame. Uh, assuming that uh, H1 is your execution time frame, this is where you map out your trades and specific trade scenarios. Uh, take the levels and ideas you came up with on the H4 time frame and translate them into actionable trade scenarios on H1 time frame. For example, here uh, we see that on H1 time frame, the market trades in a range Um, so what else? Uh, relative, we applied relative strength index indicator uh, because I use it very often. And uh, this indicator confirms that there is no trend on H1 time frame, And that's why we are waiting for an uptrend. Uh, 
for a new uptrend on this time frame. Uh, so just wait for a bounce back of the support level here, and then um, we should look for any buying opportunities. So on M15 time frame, you should be ready to enter the market. On H1 chart, you decide what direction to open the trade. So let's go back. We decided to open the long trade in case if the market bounces back of the support level. And on M15 time frame, your task is to find the concrete point to enter the market. Uh, so let's get started and I'll show you uh, how to use this strategy. Here I applied uh, uh, one of my strategies which is called Rainbow. Uh, so this strategy, uh, I use this strategy on M15 time frame on Euro USD. Uh, you can also use this strategy on British Pound USD or Australian dollar against American dollar. Uh, I I just don't recommend to trade cross courses with this strategy. Uh, to to apply this strategy, you should set five moving average indicators with different periods: five, fourteen, twenty-one, sixty-five, and one hundred twenty. All of them should be using open prices and be based on the exponential model. So you can see it on my chart. So Here I um, I used um, uh, the red one it has the period of seven, so the orange one has a period of fourteen, the Bl blue one twenty one, this uh, the green one sixty five, and the blue one one hundred twenty. So our we use exponential model, uh, model and apply it to open prices. All of these moving averages. Okay, let's go back. So to get a trading signal, you ought to be sure of three rules. All five moving average, we are in a very low range, five to 10 pips for at least a few hours. It means that this market was in a flat and the common rule tells us that a trend follows after each, I mean, uh, yeah, um, a common rule tells us that a flat follows after each trend and every trend ends with a flat. Just you have to find that the last trend ended and it's time for a new trend. So here the market consolidates. And these five moving average are in a really low range, be not more than 10 pips. The second rule is that all moving average should be located in the right order. If we are waiting for an uptrend, red one should be higher than orange, orange higher than yellow, yellow higher than green, and green higher than blue. And to get the signal, the distance between the red line and the blue one should be three times higher than it was during the period of consolidation. It means that the rainbow should be disclosed. Uh, 
okay uh, so here we see that the market consolidates we also marked uh, support areas and resistance area uh, the market still has a room for upside movement to start a new short-term trade and uh, we also use the stochastic oscillator to see if the market is over is oversold and it is so now we are waiting for upside movement after this consolidation let's see what happens then so here uh, the rainbow was disclosed the red one is uh, much higher than the blue one and these ever moving averages are in the right order so a red one a orange one yellow one then green one and blue one they actually has the same value now so and here we open a long trade there was also an additional signal uh, the resistance level was broken okay so there was a question uh, from Andres uh, about resistance level so if I'm waiting for a boons back I can um, I can send a sell stop order but if I'm waiting for the resistance level to be broken then of course I'm waiting for a confirmation candle for example here two candles uh, are above the resistance level so this is where we open the trade um, and we should prepare a negative scenario for example for this strategy uh, I consider to set the stop loss below this level this is the previous support level when the market uh, started its um, upside movement 1.1940 so below this level you can set a stop loss uh, however it is really big yeah a really large stop loss or uh, almost uh, 80 80 pips usually I don't use such a stop loss I prefer to set not more than 50 pips let's see what happens then so the major trend is still up and uh, we see that the market goes up on M15 time frame and uh, so we still have a stop loss and but we use trailing stop we trail our stop loss using the blue line this line so and this is how we can catch uh, a large trend really large trend so for example um, this trade uh, could bring more than um, 200 pips oh, oh almost yeah 200 pips right okay so if there are any questions regarding this strategy or how to apply um, time frame uh, multiple time frame analysis you can ask now uh, and then we continue with incorporation of parallel and inverse pairs okay however you can ask questions where, uh, whenever you want that's not a problem let's continue so what is incorporation of parallel and inverse pairs uh, in other words if you would like to conduct an analysis of various trends and time frames on for example uh, USD Swiss franc then you would conduct uh, multiple time frame analysis of this pair but you would also need to conduct the same 
analysis across same time frames for at least two more USD pairs, like Euro USD and British Pound USD. Okay, good question from Stuart. Wouldn't you get a better and try going down to M5 or even M1 time frame when you have made your decision to enter? Um, maybe in some cases you can get a better and try, but according to my experience, um, the idea of this um, strategy is to stay as long as you can when you catch a large uptrend. So don't uh, open a trade very often. So don't open trades very often. Uh, if you, for example, use the strategy on M5 time frame or even M1 time frame, then you see that the rainbow discloses really very often and it means that you would open the trade many uh, i mean many times and uh, some of the trades will be um of course most of the trades will be losing trades and so according to my experience uh, it's better not to switch to m15 and m1 time frame uh, so, the general idea is that um, you'd better, um, so you'd better have an open position for a long period of time and it would bring you more money than you would uh, try to catch a um, better point to enter the market and leave the market soon. Okay, let's continue. So, just once again about incorporation of parallel and inverse pairs. Uh, when, when we want to apply multiple time frame analysis on USD Swiss franc, uh, we we could also conduct the same analysis across uh, two more USD pairs like Euro USD and British Pound USD. Then you could determine with a lot more confidence if there are consistency and agreement between the three pairs. Uh, that is consistent USD strength or weakness across all three pairs. And then you would know for sure that the USD Swiss franc is trending or ranging uh, this exact analysis method can be applied to any currency pairs. Most forex traders will not do this and most forex traders are not meticulous. So let me show how I uh, completed this table. So uh, you see in this table we analyzed three different pairs and at least we can uh, identify the trend on every time frame and uh, mark support and resistance levels. So, for example, starting with a daily chart, we can see that uh, here there is a resistance level. Currently, it looks like the market is in a range. We can um, apply um, a linear regression channel. Yeah, so it shows that the market is almost flat, but it looks like if we switch to a lower time frame that uh, for example, to H4 that um, 
that uh, so it started an uptrend you see so uh, actually I, I like this indicator because it helps us to understand what is the direction okay good question from Fidelis is it possible to have access to your PowerPoint file yes sure uh, every time I conduct the webinar, uh, I then upload all the files, uh, the presentation also, uh, but all the indicators and expert advisors I use to our um, private trading group on Facebook. So uh, here we can see that uh, there is a, a resistance level and there is also so we can mark a support level as I did it here uh, what else then we switch to h1 time frame and do the same thing uh, currently we see that the market is an uptrend We can draw a trend line or apply this indicator. Then we switch to M15 and do the same thing. So on M15, the situation is uh, different. It looks like it's a correction of an uptrend. Okay, a uh, question from Andres. Am I to understand from the table that a flat trend in a higher time frame can mean an up and down trend in a lower time frame? Uh, no. So we fill this table uh, just using, uh, using the time frame. For example, we uh, we could uh, use the resistance and support uh, levels from previous time frame. For example, we can uh, use the resistance level from daily time frame if there is no resistance on H4. But to identify the trend, we should analyze each time frame. So then I did the same thing for uh, Euro USD. So then I found it on daily time frame. Um, then switch to H4 and mark everything. Then H1 and M30. Oh, M15. Then I did the same thing for uh, British pound. Um, there was a resistance level here on daily chart. I so currently looks like uh, it can be the end of uh, an uptrend, or uh, the market is likely to be in flat. Here we see that the market is flat. On H1 we see that it was a downtrend. On M15, that it's a it's a downtrend, and uh, there is a correction of this downtrend now. So this is what we should mark in our table. Okay, what else? Uh, so, uh, by the way, um, if you are a scalper, you can also find a multiple time frame analysis um, applicable to your strategy because uh, in this case, you would be aware and never trade against the larger trends and potentially hang on to trades much longer. So this is what I said about my strategy rainbow. When you hang on, uh, hang on to this trade for a long period of time. 
uh, one of the biggest reasons people scalp is that they have no idea which direction the trend is on the pair they want to trade or they only look at one time frame trader traders scalp forex but statistics show that people who hang on longer and ride longer trends make the most pips and of course all forex traders benefit from uh, multiple time frame analysis uh, so why do traders not use multiple time frame analysis well, at least most of them mostly because analyzing a lot of pairs and time frames takes time and people basically are lazy they are looking for the next big thing on forex when the answer is right in front of them Uh, looking at one forex chart is all they want to do and most scalpers only look at one time frame and could possibly be trading against a larger trend uh, for example um, uh, I apply some scalping strategies but I apply only in case if there is no major trend in the market So, if you are near the end of a trend, you may also enter a trade after a long move and be entering near the end of the trend. And of course, it can affect your performance in a negative way. So, that's why it's highly important to apply multiple time frame analysis. And to confirm your signals, you should incorporate. Uh, parallel or inverse pairs like uh, for example euro usd and british pound usd are parallel and euro usd and usd swiss franc are inverse pairs uh, there are two main problems in uh, multiple time frame analysis first of all if speaking about metatrader 4 you have to work only with fixed forex industry time frames like m15 m30 h1 h4 daily and etc in metatrader 5 this problem was solved to fix this problem and analyze different time frames we can use a special in special indicator let me show you uh, let me open uh, euro usd on let it be usd canadian dollar Uh, it needs to download data. I didn't download data on this terminal. Okay, let's close it. So let it be your USD and 15 or M1. Just wait and sec uh, wait a second. Okay, here it is. Uh, then we can apply this indicator. So you can download this indicator P4L period converter um, I will upload it uh, to our private trading group on Facebook so then you click open you click open data folder MQL for indicators then you should be sure that this indicator was added here here it is then your task is to restart your metadata for so then we click uh, when then we open the chart of the currency pair that we would like to make a custom time frame for uh, let it be um, euro usd and we want to create uh, m20 time frame so here we adjust our settings the only setting that most of uh, us need to adjust is the value for the period multiplier we adjust it to 20 
here it is then we okay good the file was created okay then we click open offline Then we see EuroUSD M20 open. Here it is. This is how you can create different time frames. It's really easy. So for multiple time frame analysis, that's a very useful tool. there is another big problem in multiple time frame analysis uh, at this time multiple time frame analysis is visual and must be done manually and it does take some time but as you get better at it the process goes much faster but i believe in the future multiple time frame analysis could be done differently so the analysis can be conducted by a computer that models the data and conducts linear or uh, I mean linear regression for each time frame and defines a trend and it can also um, I believe it can uh, also find uh, uh, support and resistance levels okay guys if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask Okay, uh, there is a question from Fidelis. Do you accept questions after we go over the recorded webinar? Of course, um, just ask them on uh, on ForexBot private trading group on Facebook, or uh, you can uh, ask your question by sending an email to support at forexbot.com. Uh, now I'm going to run a poll and please vote how satisfied are you from this webinar when one is bad and five is excellent. Okay, there is one more question. Um, would you recommend stochastic or SI indicator? for and try on M15 chart. It depends on the strategy. So we use a stochastic indicator to understand whether the market is overbought or oversold. And um, we can use a relative strength index indicator to recognize the strength of the trend. So they can be are used in different ways so if i see a trend and i want to know its strength then i would use rsi if i just want to know if the market is overbought or oversold then just uh, i can use momentum indicator or stochastic um, so sometimes they um duplicate each other but um, it depends on how you use it okay guys please vote i see that 60% uh, of you vo voted okay so okay i close the poll 67% Okay. Okay, if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, what else? Let's sum it up. 
while multi-time frame analysis will not guarantee a winning trade, by employing it in our analysis, we are putting another trading edge in our favor and increasing the likelihood that we will have a successful trade. To implement multiple time frame analysis, after we establish the trend, we want to check a couple of lower time frames charts and not enter the trend until they are in agreement with a longer time frame chart that we use to establish the trend. Once they are all in agreement, we enter the trade. Um, can you advise when the webinar will be uploaded? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think next week. I can't say exactly what day. Uh, how do I use multiple time frame analysis in my trading? Uh, you may know that I trade mainly with the help of expert advisors and before the week starts, I analyze higher time frames to understand market sentiment and make adjustments to the settings. Sometimes I just force my expert advisors to, to trade long only or short only. So from this webinar, I hope you, you have learned that uh, multiple time frame analysis is using more than one time frame to identify trading opportunities. At the same time, a higher time frame is used to find the overall market direction and sentiment, and a lower time frame is used to find an entry. Uh, multiple time frame analysis can be used for counter trend trading. For example, if we um, take uh, support and resistance levels from the larger time frame and uh, then uh, when switching to lower time frames, we are uh, looking for bounces back from these support and resistance levels. Using multiple time frame analysis combines the benefits of the reliability of a higher time frame and reduced risk of a lower time frame. And of course, time frames should be at least four times apart. So if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, thank you for your attention. This is all I wanted to tell you on this webinar. If you have some questions after the webinar, so as I said, just um, uh, you can send an email to support at forexbot.com or ask me on Facebook in our uh, Forex Board private trading group. Okay, looks like there are no more questions. Thank you guys for your attention. So I hope to see you on my next webinar. Anyway, if you have any questions, I will can uh, I can answer them later. Thank you for coming.